10 candidates versus Donald Trump. Joining us now in an exclusive interview is former speechwriter and communications director for President Bill Clinton, Don Baer. Don, good to see you. Great to be Thanks here. So Thanks so much for joining us this morning. What are you expecting tonight? You know, tonight, I always look for who has the most to win and who has the most to lose, right? So who has the most to win? I think Carly Fiorina, right? She's the new person on that stage, and she's already done very well in her interactions with, uh, with uh, all of this. I think she's the one to keep an eye on. And who has the most to lose at this point? Jeb Bush. There's no question about it. He has got to get some traction. You know, you read in the press, they've been prepping him in a way that he can come out. Where's the bite in Jeb? And I, I think that's the dynamic to watch. Obviously, with Donald Trump in the middle of all of this, who's dominating dominating the whole thing at this point. He's dominating the whole thing because he's resonating with the American people, but not because of specifics on solutions. I guess because of his bombastic way that he um, communicates things. When do you think people are going to demand that we hear some specifics about economic policy, foreign policy, and the real solutions to this country's well, I, issues? I don't know when they're going to demand it. They're probably going to demand it when the media starts to demand it. You know, specificity is a character issue in this election. His, his hat, his motto is, make America great again. The real question is, how do we make America grow again? That's absolutely right. right. That, at the heart of this election is, where do we find economic growth? That's why the country is frustrated. That's why you have 12 years of people saying we're on the wrong track, because the middle class and other people in this country don't feel like they are moving ahead. So at some point, specificity and being real about these issues is going to have to come home. But Donald Trump is very good at tapping into that anxiety at this juncture, and he's the only one who's actually resonating with Absolutely. people. Absolutely. Sandra. So, so you'll have to forgive me for asking what might be a very, I don't know, silly elementary question, but as I a specialize former... in those. That's good. <laughs> Thank you. So please bear with me. But as a former speechwriter for Bill Clinton, which, I mean, obviously we have just seen some amazing speeches of Bill Clinton's time, what do you make of Donald Trump's off-the-cuff you know, in the moment speeches that he's made so far, unscripted for the most part that we've seen. Well, the best speeches in our times, given the way the media cover things now, are conversations with the country. And that's what Donald Trump is engaged in, a conversation with the country. Now, it's a one-sided conversation, which is the kind of chat he likes to have. But he's up there really articulating and expressing the frustration. I was watching the other day when he was in Dallas and the crowd behind him. And you would watch the smiles and the nods on their faces. And they are knowing smiles that people have up there because they have felt exact. They've lived what he's talking about. So he's articulating that. Mm -hmm. And being that it's unscripted, it seems so genuine. When, you know, when yeah. you've got such low faith in our leaders, it's nice to see somebody who appears to be genuinely speaking his mind. Well, you know, we're coming off an era where our president has been dependent upon teleprompters, right? People That's remember right. that. Yeah. Well, Donald Trump, there's no teleprompter that can kind of keep up with him. At this no, country. and he's doing great at it, by the way. Yeah. Let's talk about Hillary for a second and the other side. Hillary Clinton has been embroiled in this email scandal. Uh, this is what former Nebraska Senator Bob Kerry told us on this program last week. Listen to this. And I believe what the secretary did was to say, I want to do an end run around for you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to set up a server in my home. Uh, nobody's ever done that before. Colin Powell didn't do that. It wasn't because she didn't want to carry two cell phones around. She's secretary of state, for God's sake. She, give me the red one. Give me the blue one. Who the hell cares? Your thoughts? Here's my thought. Is this what we're going to focus on? Let's go back to what we were just saying. Specificity is a character issue. People want to make this the character issue. Hillary Clinton has given more speeches talking specifically about what she would do to help move the country forward. Just It's only two months ago mm -hmm. she gave a speech in which she called for a new growth and fairness economy in this country. And she was very specific about the policies that she would put forward. It was very well received two months ago. Mm -hmm. Now, we haven't heard enough from her about that, getting back to what, as I say, That's the central choice, the issue. Way. She hasn't she, been she granting hasn't, interviews or answering reporter questions. Right, well, because all they want to talk about is that, is, or is the server issue. We really need to get focused on what matters here. Otherwise, Donald Trump will continue to be the person who captures people's anxieties mm -hmm. rather than thinking about what their hopes and opportunities are I'm, going to I'm be. I'm totally with you on the, on the growth uh, story, and that is the uh, story that we want to hear from all the candidates and we want to hear solutions. But to, to push back on the idea that is this what we're going to talk about, it's not necessarily about the server, it's more about trust. I mean, you yeah, looked exactly. at that poll recently and, you know, people said, what are, you know, what words do you come up with to describe Hillary Clinton? What were the words? Liar, you know, 
uh, what, what, untrustworthy. untrustworthy. I mean, you know, these are the words that Deceitful. people. So it's, it's not just about necessarily the email scandal, but it's about how she's handling I, things. Is she going to be upfront with the American people or live by different rules than everybody else? I understand that. But I want to come back to what we should be looking for in our leaders and how we trust our leaders. We should trust our leaders who tell us, here's what our problems are. Here's the narrative of this country. Here's how I'm going to help lead it. And here's what I will do about it. Those are words. That's trust. Why can't anybody do that? Those are not words. Those are actions that she says she will take. And her actions were also to do something that she knew she should not do and then to give an excuse for why she did it that we all know is completely unreasonable. Most of us deal with the horrors of having to carry two cell phones. And she did something that put us at risk claiming that she did it for her own personal ease. That's an action that concerns me, not exactly the email, but that person to be my president who claims that she will put us at risk so that she doesn't have to carry two phones? Oh, God forbid. Most people live the reality of a no-growth economy, right. right, with no chance of getting ahead yeah. or their children getting ahead. Agreed, but I can't yeah. trust her with two cell phones. How do I well, trust I, her yeah. words about what she's going to do with the like, economy? She needs to answer those questions, and she started to. She's come out and apologized. She, I'm not disagreeing with you, but I want to, I just hope that we're going to rise above that because we all have so much at stake in this election. And we all know.